yeah, uh, some good sharing. So once again, uh, to show the title slide, our topic is on wisdom and guidance in relationships. And um, for the first question, the thought was uh, it's better, uh, good to go to someone with more experience, uh, especially for specific subject matters. And sometimes uh, we might not necessarily want to receive advice from someone that we feel doesn't have experience. And then uh, an example that was brought up from among us is um, maybe grandparents and proximity, um, just living close, uh, as well as um, it's easier to receive advice from those who don't judge us. Okay, so yeah, uh, this wasn't specific to relationships, but um, I think it's very thematic for uh, what we're going to talk about. So another um, intro question we could have um, now specifically about relationships is what are some consequences of a lack of good guidance in thinking about relationships? What are some consequences of a lack of good guidance in thinking about relationships? can talk about if you can think of any on both the individual and so societal level. So yeah, just as a recap of uh, what we talked about earlier from the earlier questions, um, just so we can get back. So um, yeah, as a recap, um, we talked about, uh, I guess from this question, um, the consequences, uh, yeah, could be just uh, misunderstandings, um, and then at the very least, awkwardness, and um, yeah, just maybe feelings of being judged. And then uh, for review, um, it was talking about uh, Paul talking to the Corinthians about how all things are lawful for me, not all things are helpful, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Um, and then there's this overall sense in the present where uh, we think many of our desires are natural. So, um, but that doesn't mean we're in the right um, because in this current world, um, many of those are still like just, you know, we naturally don't want God. Um, we naturally want sin. So um, in reality, we're being dominated um, by something like lust, um, as, as maybe as the Corinthians were at the time. Okay. And then uh, the kind of to recap. Um, so this is the Proverbs and a uh, book of wisdom. Um, we believe, um, I didn't mention this earlier, but we believe many of them were written by King Solomon. So the son of David, um, who was known as one of the wisest kings. Um, so just general advice, uh, as well as specific principles. And um, this is his, um, this is one of the kings uh, remembering the words of um, his mother. Okay, so to uh, start again, um, we have verse one, the words of King Lemuel, uh, which means uh, dedicated, someone dedicated to God, um, receiving ded dedication, an oracle that his mother taught him. What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to amend your ways to those who destroy kings. Mm. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. Okay, so uh, yeah, this sounds like very intense advice. So the background is, uh, well, we don't entirely know uh, for certain who Lemuel is. Um, I just briefly looked at the definition of the name. I'm not exactly sure it means exactly dedication, but something along those lines, like someone, you know, someone blessed by God in some way is what that mean name means. So it could, you know, the actual name is probably someone else, some other king, um, 
of Israel. So the easiest way to interpret, and that makes a lot of sense, though we're not entirely sure, is that it might be Solomon. Um, and it fits the arc of his life. It's talking about, well, his mom, so mom Bathsheba, um, right? This was the woman uh, that, you know, David uh, fell in lust to, and um, David killed, um, right, Bathsheba's first husband. Um, so Solomon's mom, so she is Solomon's mom, uh, they would, she would be very knowledgeable about kings being led astray, right? So it almost seems to fit very well. Um, and then, so in terms of the arc of Solomon's life, uh, this is a passage from First Kings. I'll just read it quickly. So now King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, you shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives who were princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. All right. So yeah, this, this maybe is the most extreme example we can think of um, in the Bible of just the leader being led astray. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's really sad because he was also, I mean, he was the wisest, um, but maybe just wisdom in this world uh, kind of separate from, you know, just reasonableness in relationships. So um, yeah, this is, this is how he fell away. And so kind of to tie into the beginning for our um, intro, um, yeah, some, so uh, just embedding a question. So advice from parents can be the hardest to hear. Can anyone relate, right? So, um, well, fortunately in this passage, it seems this king maybe in his old age is, is remembering his mom's words. Um, and um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know, sometimes uh, maybe it seems like if it was Solomon, um, then, then I, obviously he didn't listen when he was younger to his mom. Um, so, so it's just interesting, like, but maybe we can, I don't know if we can relate to that. Um, uh, I'll, I'll kind of pause so we can maybe talk a bit. Um, yeah, again. So yeah, uh, very um, good sharing, um, and uh, the the sense seemed to be yeah, it can be hard to just get advice from parents. I mean, um, yeah, maybe because it, it often clashes so much with with our own desires. Um, but there there ah, is this understanding that they they would want what's best, uh, even though you know sometimes. It's hard to discern. We can't know the future, um, but the goal, um, God's will, includes just understanding reconciliation, um, however long it takes. So, in this case, for this passage in Proverbs thirty-one, uh, one to nine, um, right? Even though if it was uh, if it was Solomon, uh, he didn't listen at the time, but he's remembering the words now. The reasons to listen are, uh, you know, just where he came from. So, in verse two. Um, you know, what are you doing, son of my womb? Um, the second question in verse two, right? Uh, there's this sense of, right? I mean, um, out of the people that you've known literally all your life, um, ideally, for, you know, for those who, for most of us, I think all of us um, who have, um, you know, known our parents, um, yeah, uh, including our, our moms, that, that is, is something real. Um, and uh, right, there's this consideration of, of our biology as well, our genes, our DNA, um, right? It's not everything, but, but 
I mean, it is something, it's a lot. Um, so yeah, just, just someone that you've spent that much time with. Um, there's some consideration there. And then uh, the other kind of reminder um, that the mom gives to Lemuel is, what are you doing, son of my vows? Son of my vows. So I think this kind of, I, I think this pretty much means marriage vows. Um, so just, uh, right, the principle of faithfulness between spouses and, um, right, and this, this isn't, this is hard, right, for those, um, because maybe, maybe we've been um, hurt by divorce, um, or, or we've seen how, how devastating um, separation, divorce can be, but uh, in this case, um, for this principle of, of Lemuel's mom, that, uh, you know, parents being faithful, um, living that example, um, that's another reason, right? So, so often it's not, right, just uh, what, what a parent says or, or just the advice, it's just how that parent lives lives uh, his or her life, how our parents live our lives, uh, live their lives. Um, and of course, you know, um, children know, can see um, that, right, the way to live is by example, um, and they look at that example. And really, uh, you know, this, this goes into larger discussions, you know, about leadership as well. Um, same goes for a church um, leader. Um, us in the fellowship as advisors, um, you know, just how do we live? Are we being ex an example? Okay, so that's the background for that advice. And now we will talk about maybe some of the, the, the consequences of misguided relationships um, in the later verses, right? So the comparison is this misguided relationships are like concentrated alcohol. So verse four, um, it's not for kings, Lemuel, not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink. Um, it seems to shift, right? Uh, but I, I don't think it's necessarily, right, talking exclusively just about alcoholism. Um, this, this chapter, um, you know, uh, is certainly, I think, um, yeah, about relationships. And then um, right after this passage, there's a famous one. Um, passage about a good example of of marriage and motherhood um so that's the contrast um but in this just very negative example and then uh lapses in judgment misguided relationships lead to lapses in judgment just like concentrated alcohol leads to loss of memory so verse four to five um strong drink lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted so there's this there's this oh, like intense word. Um, I, I looked up the original language Hebrew and pervert in this case, I mean, it's just very interesting. Uh, the literal sense is like, oh, you I almost, it's like double crossing someone. It's like you, you changed your mind um, and when, when you used to respect the rights of the afflicted, now, now you're denying them their rights, you're ignoring their rights, um, you're doing the opposite of, of what those rights are. Um, so that's literally what that um, word means. Um, so lapses in judgment, um, like loss of memory, forget, forgetting what has been decreed. I don't think it just necessarily means, oh, they literally forgot. It's that, you know, they're so blinded, they're ignoring. Um, the laws. Okay. And then finally, the leaders become corrupt, ignoring laws and denying rights. So once again, in verse five, um, right, for those who are most vulnerable, their rights are being violated. So this is a very extreme example. Um, so when we link it to Solomon, um, right, we saw in the earlier uh, kind of excerpt uh, that he, well, not necessarily in this one, uh, but we see the general sense, turn his heart away after other gods uh, at the end of verse four. So these idols or maybe even evil spirits, demons, and, you know, 
he acted on that. He he set up, um, you know, uh, religious, you know, false religious institutions, um, false altars, um, and this eventually would lead to the path of things like child sacrifice. Um, so it's yeah, it's crazy. Um, and then you know, we don't know exactly, um, you know, if this was everything, but certainly. Um, if, if Bathsheba was the one who gave this advice, then Solomon, then Solomon ignoring it was was a very um, kind of potentially influential cause um, for for just the downfall of of just Israel. And yeah, just I don't know, just everything breaking down um, for the weakest. Okay, so that's that's kind of that whole uh, sense um, in the middle of the passage. So we'll go back um, to uh, the last part. I, I think it uh, bears repeating. Um, so so uh, there's the passage in the middle about you know giving strong drink to the one who is perishing, wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. It's it's just that comparison to that level again, where, um, oh, you might as well, you know, it might as well be losing your memory if you pursue misguided relationships. Um, and then the final part, the call to do what's right, open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute, meaning those who are poor, um, destitute, and uh, open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy, verse nine. So, um, the way I kind of interpret uh, this and see, I guess, the link between them is, um, I, yeah, it, it seems like there's this link of pursuing a misguided relationship um, and, and just neglecting everyone else. Um, so... I don't know if it's one to one, but uh, I certainly maybe see see it in some areas. In Solomon's case, right? He thought, right? Uh, from his perspective, end of verse two, he clung to his wives in love, and then, um, you know, oh, because oh, he thought he loved them, or maybe you know, the scary thing is maybe it really could be considered human love. Um, his wives. Uh, just caused him to to just commit idolatry, um, to go after false idols, and um, this is right where his own personal, uh, his own his own relational kind of the influence of that out, uh, outweighed everything else um, in terms of just you know following God's law, which which applied to everyone, um, you know, nation of Israel and fairness. Um, so one kind of thing that I see um, when, when thinking about family and fairness is, well, I mean, we don't exactly treat everyone equally, right? In our personal lives with family, there is unique treatment that makes sense. Um, however, that doesn't mean that we're playing favorites. Um, Fairness still exists that's separate from treating everyone equally in terms of the law. And so, um, yeah, just following God's law and really even beyond the law, just God's, God's will uh, for us to, to act in love. Um, the question, we don't have to answer it, but just for asking ourselves, will we care for the lowly? Um, you know, right? They're not, they're not attractive to us, maybe, right? Unlike, unlike this, this relationship. But, but God cares for them, um, will we, right? And by ourselves, we're not going to get there, uh, right? We can't uh, will ourselves to, to care and love when, where there's no love. We can't produce love artificially, um, but God already has done it for us, um, right? Uh, we don't deserve special treatment um, by ourselves. We're, we're not part of God's family. Um, just, just because we're so good, 
he had to adopt us into his family um, by just our own nature, we're guilty, um, but yet God, God covered for all of that um, and sending Jesus to, to be our advocate and also our substitute um, to take on that punishment that we deserve, um, right? So yeah, basically we care because Christ first cared for us. So that's the, the overall sense, right? Uh, this is a very extreme example, but, but you know, I, I see it in a lot of ways. Um, so now we've kind of talked about this. Uh, what are the benefits of having a wise approach to relationships? How can we be motivated toward being fair to others? Um, yeah, just fair to everyone. Even. So what are the benefits of having a wise approach to relationships? How can we be motivated toward being fair to others? And I'll pause. Oh, wait, no, this is the screen share. So yeah. Yeah, no, that was really good um, sharing. Yeah, I got the sense of um, really trying to understand um, different cultural backgrounds, um, remembering our, our own experience, with our parents, even, even those who are uh, currently parents now. And then, yeah, just, just this desire to, to learn, um, to, to just increase our, our understanding um, and, and yeah, and, and really live out, um, yeah, not just in words, but yeah, it is important to speak um, it out, uh, but also to live it out. So, so yeah, no, that's really good um, for, for just, um, yeah, our overall approach to relationships and our motivation. Um, just toward that fairness and, and, you know, fairness includes all sorts of kinds of things. Some people may be um, prejudiced or I don't know, maybe that's too strong a word, biased in favor of their families. Others may be biased um, to not listen to their families, right? Because um, maybe with family, oh, it, it's too raw, it's too close. So I'd say in terms of fairness, right? Um, Will we, will we take, you know, advice for, for what it is itself at, at the very least, um, even though, yeah, it, it can be tough um, when maybe, uh, maybe certain people are, aren't living it out. Um, but yeah, um, God, yeah, just calling us to be fair, uh, maybe in all different kinds of ways as well. Um, and yeah, also the sense of, right, um, will, will we treat, you know, everyone, knowing that, um, you know, they have the image of God, um, not just, I don't know, not just who we're attracted to. Um, and um, yeah, and we don't get that motivation from ourselves, um, but, but Jesus is actively, um, spiritually changing us um, if, we, if we believe. Okay, so yeah, really good talk. Um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, close. Or do you have something, Isaac? Uh, no, just check that. Oh, yeah, you need to head up? Yeah, all good. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah. So let's uh, just um, close in prayer. And um, yeah. All right. Um, guys, just thank you so, so much for this session. Um, yeah, e even for this passage, uh, not one that uh, I've ever heard spoken about but but just one that i've read um over the years and um yeah just just in preparing for this uh it's just so just amazing and um you just just learned so much and and doug uh kind of discovered um new things so i just pray yeah for all of us that we would have that wonder uh for the word um in our own bible reading um yeah not just for formal times when we can meet um yeah i pray that we really uh seek that um understanding even though yeah it can be hard uh with parents but um yeah you, you never um meant for for there to be division um just you know in the original just will of how things should be um but but you you want a just an understanding family and, and you promise that to us um, in eternity. Um, so I just thank you for that. Um, 
And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.